Hello, Internesa! Nice to see you! I have an interesting question that reveals a number of great things about playing guitar that I want to address with you. Painful to watch. Also went from writing a song to soloing. This is not what you expected, huh? But I think this comment is incredibly interesting. Why? Because it tells you exactly how things look like in reality. Let me tell you, let me show you. So this video where this comment was on was a video of a lesson of mine when I explain a student who asked about how to write melodies in her songs and I explained to her a little bit of ear training. And the way I explain the ear training is that I, I have her improvise a few lines on the guitar Okay, simple stuff like just pentatonic scale, and I have her sing around, uh, 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 okay, along the uh, the lines of the guitar. And uh, by the way, she's also a singer. She's much better than me. I'm horrible at singing and singing in tune. But that's a great exercise, okay? And if you just try it for a few minutes, you'll see what I mean. And I again, I linked the video so you guys will see exactly what I was doing and why. But this comment, this comment says two important things. It only says it in a negative way, so you, you just are tempted to dismiss it because it's a negative comment, but those are really, really important. The first thing is that it's painful to watch. Yes, exactly. Whenever you practice, if somebody was there watching you, that would be painful to watch. If your practice is not painful to watch, if you're not ashamed of how much you're failing during practice, how slow you're gonna be, how many mistakes you make, and all this kind of thing, you are not actually practicing, okay? That's the important thing. That's why we practice by ourselves in the privacy of our own, our own bedrooms or studios or whatever, and not in public, because we want to be allowed to make all the mistakes, okay? The optimal, I mean, it's gonna be, if anybody will see how I practice, they will cringe from beginning to end. But you see, that's the point. The optimal amount of cringe is not zero, okay? If you never cringe while you're practicing, you are not trying hard enough. And in that video, in that lesson, we were trying hard enough. So of course, it's painful to watch. That's kind of the point of your breaking new ground, we are doing something different, if you are trying some stuff for the first time, you cannot expect yourself to do stuff right the first time. This is incredibly important because I have a number of people that write me in the comment in YouTube via email that they don't think they have the talent, they don't think they can do this, and they tried exactly once. Guys, the first time you're gonna fail. Period. That's it. Okay? So, yes, it is painful to watch. That's kind of the point. The second thing, the second thing that this comment says is that we go from writing a melody to improvising, to lead playing, I think the comment says. But you see, see, that's exactly another point. It's writing a melody and improvising a lead are very closely related activities. Okay, every musician who is able to write a great melody is also able at some level to improvise. Because when you write a melody, that's what you do. You try, you hear, you try again, you hear again, and you keep refining the melody until it sounds the way you want. The melody does not spring out of your mind completely formed the first time, okay? So again, yes, it's painful to watch the first time you write a melody, the first few notes that come out are typically horrible. You may get lucky every now and then. But then you try again and again and again, and the process is very similar to what we call improvisation. And that's why if you want to become a good songwriter, or a good musician in general, you should study a little bit of improvisation. And we have this myth of the perfect composer who sits down at the instrument, the piano, the guitar, whatever, and write the melody right the first time. And this may happen once you've made all the mistakes. But the reality is that all the great melody writers of all eras were great improvisers. Bach was a great improviser. Mozart was known more for his improvisation than his actual uh, composition. Beethoven made his fame by improvising better than other people. Okay, Chopin, Liszt, whatever. And, and, and this is true until, until, until right now. People who can write great melodies are typically also great at improvising. Okay, of course, 
the level of quality between improvising something in real time and writing a melody and taking all the time and trial and error that you need, it's different, the melody is going to be more refined. But it's important to realize that those two things are correlated. Okay? And again, so I thank the, 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 the person who wrote this comment, even if he or she wrote this comment in a very negative way, because, you see, that's exactly how it's supposed to be. It's supposed to look horrible, okay, for 99% of the time at least. It's supposed to be painful, okay, not to be painful, but at least to look painful or to be painful to watch. And writing melody looks a lot like improvisation when you're doing it. And that's important to know because when you come here on YouTube or you go on Instagram or Twitter or any, anywhere else, you see only the perfect take. You see only the 60 seconds, this minute of, the, of those great players playing the perfect piece of music, and you never see the hours that came before that, where they sat down, improvised, made a mistake, practiced the right technique, got it wrong, corrected it, made it better, okay? And again, by design, of course, we want to show off our best side, not our worst side. And, I mean, that's just how it's supposed to be, but if you are learning an instrument, know that that's the 1% of the time. The other 99% is you making a fool of yourself with your instrument and just, yeah, just fooling around, noodling, having fun, trying to try new things, putting it together, failing, failing again, failing a third time, until you can make it. Okay? So thank you for that comment, because it was great. And if you want to know more about how to learn this instrument, I would recommend you guys check out my courses. Hey, it's the internet, not only we are showing you our best side, but we're also trying to sell you our courses. So check out my courses at the link on the top right. If you like this video, smash on that like button. If you agree with me that practice sometimes looks painful, click on the subscribe button. I'm going to show you way more, many more painful moments and things in this channel. And if you have any comment about this, please write it in the comment. I love reading your feedback. I love reading your questions. If you have questions, write them in the comment. I love answering to that. This is Tommaso Zillio of musicdirtyforguitar.com. And until next time, enjoy.